Garlic is an herb we all like. We use it in our food. It's a wonderful seasoning and uh, it's also known as stinking rose and we all probably know why that is because of its effects uh, on our breath afterwards. But if you add a little parsley to it, sometimes it cuts that just incidentally. It has a lot of medical uses as well. We know that we can, it can be used to lower blood pressure. The allicin in it is the most active ingredient that's responsible for that. It also works as an anticoagulant. It works in a way to, uh, that's an antimicrobial agent. In fact, during the pre-antibiotic era, it was used in wars because of its uh, potent effect against bacteria, viruses, and against fungi. It also is said to lower cholesterol and lower glucose a bit, but the, effect of, the effects of it aren't that big. It even goes so far as to say that it can ward off vampires and werewolves, which you know, I'll have to leave that to you in your imagination. And certainly in folklore, that was something that was kind of an interesting a little aside. Garlic has basically two active ingredients that we know of. One, the allicin, which has the effects uh, that we just mentioned. And another one's called dialyl tri-sulfide. Uh, and what it makes is hydrogen sulfide. You know that stinky smell from eggs after they get rotten? That's hydrogen sulfide. And if you breathe too much of it, it's toxic. In fact, it can be lethal because it can cause liver necrosis. But it also has some interesting, power, powerful effects in low doses. It has an effect to dilate both the large blood vessels and the small blood vessels uh, in our body. And in situations where we lose oxygen supply, just because oxygen is low, like in the setting of a stroke or a heart attack, what happens is if you have small amounts of hydrogen sulfide in your system, it will do a lot to protect the damage that occurs in the situation at least of heart attacks because that's been studied at least in mice. And there it shows that if you add the right amount after you've clamped a coronary artery for about 45 minutes where you'd expect those tissues to be close to dead, 61% of what would normally uh, be dead tissue is no longer dead. So we learned some things in these experiments about hydrogen sulfide that are really important from a biochemical effect. It works in concert with nitric oxide, which is another chemical that we know a lot about because we know that it's, in nitro, it's, it's what nitroglycerin turns into when it comes into the body, and it dilates up those coronary arteries and protects people who are having angina and maybe protects them from having a heart attack. So between the two of them, they have powerful effects at restoring blood flow. Now the mechanism of action of, of hydrogen sulfide is interesting. Normally the mitochondria, which are the energy packets in our cells, use oxygen to make ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. And that energy is what keeps cells able to function. When we run out of ATP, we get tissue necrosis. And that's what's happening in these mice when they're tying off their coronary arteries. However, when you put hydrogen sulfide in there in low amounts, it slows down the rate at which the mitochondria tend to disintegrate and cause the tissue damage to occur. So it's an interesting mechanism uh, that we should know about, particularly if we're in a setting where we want to use it uh, uh, to be protective. It's not in clinical practice yet because we're just learning about it, but certainly its counterpart nitric oxide is, and we've been using that for centuries to try and help people who have angina. Now the interesting part about allyl trisul diallyl trisulfide is that it's in, uh, it turns out that there's a lot of sulfur and that's the smell that we, that we get with the rotten egg that's caused by the sulfur that's in the amino acids that are uh, in the garlic and that's mainly cysteine. There are three amino acids that have a lot of sulfur in them. It's methionine, cysteine, and taurine. And, of course, glutathione is made of cysteine and two other amino acids, and it's the most important intracellular antioxidant we have. And it may be that this whole business of what's happening of tissue necrosis when oxygen levels drop in the setting of a heart attack or a stroke that lead to tissue damage. So while allicin is, is best known uh, for its uh, actions on the body by lowering blood pressure, being an anticoagulant, being antimicrobial, and maybe having a small effect on both uh, uh, cholesterol and blood sugar levels. It's the diallyl trisulfide that probably is going to upstage it a little bit. And I think there may be a future uh, for this in being able to treat people who are in the acute setting 
of having a heart attack or, or a stroke if they're in a hospital where they could get this kind of treatment. So there's hope for us in this setting and we have to continue doing our research and see if we can bring these approaches forward into clinical practice.